you've been listening this far, we're gonna throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour gonna last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love all music. I love this extra hour. Everything is organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Worst thing you could say to me at 7 o'clock is, Wendy, can I talk to you for a minute? No. <laughs> Not unless you're going to ride the elevator downstairs, walk with me across the street. Watch, keep talking while I get in my car and continue the conversation on my cell phone as you walk back to the office because I'm not waiting. I'll take this home, though. Definitely. Hello? Hello, Wendy. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. Um, Wendy. Yes. Can I have some tickets to the um, Alicia Key TV? Do, do we have any this hour? I don't know that we have any this no, hour. No, I was trying to call, be the number 11 caller, oh, but I didn't Oh, we do. Through. Okay. All right. We'll give them to you. What's your name? No, it's not My name Alicia is um, Barbara. It's, oh, it's, it's not Alicia Keys, by the way. So Who never mind. We don't have them. Okay. We have something to give away, but it's not right. Alicia Keys, and you can't just call in and win. Okay, fine. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. For this particular contest. Let's go to the next caller. What are you doing? Uh, hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Did you give away the tickets for the concert yet? Yeah, I, I gave some. I gave a two pair away earlier. We don't have them this hour. Sorry about that. Take care. Bye bye. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Yes, hi. Hi. I'm just calling. I want to tell you that I love you. Thank you. And I don't know if you got my email a while ago, but I sent you an email telling you that you need to wear your hair in a bun in a ponytail because you look so pretty in a bun. Thank you. It draws a lot of attention to your face, and you have a very pretty face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank another thing, a while ago, I went to KP, King's Plaza in Brooklyn, and a cab driver offered me a free ride if I knew what station you started off at. And I'm so embarrassed. I did not know he is, like, so in love with you. W wow. Yes. Now, I guess he meant what station did I start off with here in New York? Right. I started off at Hot 103.9. You know, Hot was a different frequency on the dial, oh. and they played dance music back then. I and said the lipstick station. Yeah, no. See, they didn't. Hot didn't cater to the urban population at that time, or the black population, I should say. They catered to urban, but it was urban in um, Puerto Rican and um, in Italian oh, okay. and white. It was it was like disco y type music. All right. Okay. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye bye. And then I worked at PLJ, and then I showed up at Kiss. Hello. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hi, this is Tamika. Hi, Tamika. Hi, I love your show. Thank I love you. you. I see you at Brokers all the time in East Orange. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I was calling to see if you had any more tickets to the Alicia Keys John Legend show. No, so about two people called earlier. We don't have those this hour. We gave them away earlier in the show. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. But everybody keep it here because I do have a, a major announcement Hello. to make about um, WBLS in a few moments. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hey. Hi. My name is Janelle and I'm from Montclair, New Jersey. Hi, Janelle. Well, I just wanted to say I love your show. I listen to it every day. I'm like addicted. You're definitely a friend of my head. And uh, thank you. I also was calling to find out about the VH1 tickets. Well, um, I'm actually doing a red carpet Monday night, so technically I am working Monday, but not until Monday night after I've relaxed all day. I'm taping um, the red carpet at the Beacon Theater for the VH1 Save the Music with Alicia Keys and John Legend in them. And as far as the next one coming on... Um well, you know, I, I haven't gotten an actual date, so I couldn't tell you, but I would say in the next five weeks. Well, Wendy, I was calling about um, to see if I could get tickets for the VH1. Oh, I thought online. you said the VH1 tape. Oh, no, we, we gave them away earlier. Oh, you gave the tickets to OA already. Yeah. Okay, and also I wanted to ask you, are you ever going to have Eva on your show? Uh, at this point, probably not. Really? I mean, she would sh certainly be invited, but, you know, being that it was put out there, and I believe what I believe, regardless of the spin that they try to put on it. Well, you know, Wendy, I am a lesbian, and I knew from the show that she was gay. Mm, so you can, I had already I had already picked up on it, but when, then when I heard the story about her and Missy Elliott, you know, I was like, okay, it's out there now. Yeah. But I definitely would like to find out what club she goes to. <laughs> I would I would love to meet her and and steal her <laughs> and steal her from Missy is what you're saying? Yes, I I don't have as much money as Missy, but I do look much better than her. Wow! Wow! So, <laughs> well, thank you for calling. Okay, Wendy, you take care. All right, bye bye. Okay, bye bye. All right. <sighs> Don't forget, Vaughn comes up at 7 o'clock with The Quiet Storm. Dear Wendy, I'm a 25-year-old woman, and I've been trying to get pregnant now for five years. 
I'm engaged, but I found out that my tubes are blocked and I can't have children without having the in vitro process, which is very costly. We can't afford it. Everyone around me is just popping out babies like it's nothing. I can't even go to baby showers or children's parties without crying afterwards. I know what you mean. Do you know of any programs, whether it be government or private, that can assist me with this? I haven't even told my family because I'm too embarrassed. Only me and my fiancé know about it now. Signed, Desperate. No, I don't know of any programs. I know people who have gone through this. Um, and the best I can tell you is uh, ask your doctor. You know, ask, ask your GYN. Ask somebody who performs in vitro. I mean, ask and ask the secretaries. The, 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 the assistants, the medical assistants in offices are a wealth of knowledge. I mean, maybe you can take out a loan. What is it, like $30,000 now for in vitro or something like that? Is it like $30,000, $25,000, $20,000? Somewhere up there. It's, it's, it's pricey. And there's no guarantee that, that you'll get pregnant with that first shot. And then you try over and over and over and over again. And it can be very costly. But I would start with asking the medical assistants within an office because they know sometimes more than the doctors where a person who doesn't have the money can get the money to get things done that they want to get done. I wish you, wish you luck, desperate. Dear Wendy, in reference to a married man who is getting paid for sexual favors by his father-in-law, well, he stated that he plans to report the father-in-law to the IRS for tax evasion. If he really believes that he has evidence against the father-in-law, he can contact me and ask him for my fax number or phone number. So ask him for a fax number, phone number, so you can pass along my information to him. And who is this? Oh, sign Michelle Brown, special agent for the Internal Revenue Service. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, she's here in the two one two, the t and she she sent me a copy of her business card. It says Department of Treasury Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation Division, two ninety Broadway, fourth floor. Oh. Dude, you want to be in touch with Michelle? Fax us with your telephone number or something, and we can give you her information. Or fax us with your fax number. We'll fax you her business card. Oh. Dear Wendy, ooh, how you doing? Will you be on the red carpet for the 2005 BET Awards in June? Didn't the BET Awards just happen? Don Cornelius didn't invite... Oh, that was the um, Soul Train Awards. I don't know. VH1, are, am I going to be on the red carpet there? Is it okay if listeners say hello to you and Miss Artie Life of the Party out and about around the tri-state area? Of course. Of, yeah. And I know you just like the show Tripping with Cameron Diaz on MTV, but next week's show will have Fonsworth Benz Bentley. Ooh, how you doing? Tell Artie, hey, cat daddy, a toe is a toe. Thanks. That's from Candace. Thanks, Candace. Or what they call you after midnight on a Saturday, Candy. <laughs> Try to be all sophisticated between the hours of nine and five. Candace. Hair up in a bun. Breast taped down. You know how that goes. <laughs> Prescription glasses on. She lets that bun down and untapes those boobs and takes those glasses off. It's candy. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Well, congratulations to Puffy. He doesn't have to pay as much child support as he thought he'd have to Misa Hilton Brim. And Misa, listen, <clears throat> girl, this is still enough money to luxuriate on you, Justin, your husband, <laughs> your mother, and all of them. $21,000 a month for child support. Jeez, Puffy. You're being hit at all angles. Karma's a bitch. And Justin's 11, so Misa, spend well because you only have another seven years. I'm looking for you to retire off this money, girl. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mariah Carey is slamming an ex-boyfriend <clears throat> because he took her to 
at what she describes as a diner style restaurant. Now you know. Mariah entertains us all the time with her demanding outbursts and her high maintenance. But she insists that she never abuses her power. However, she does admit <clears throat> that she was disgusted when a potential boyfriend took her on a date that didn't meet her high standards. And here's her quote. This guy who has a lot of money and who should know better took me to TGI Fridays. That was not a good thing. Well, let me see. I would have to agree. You know, on a after you know you're you've gone out and you already know each other and you're just grabbing a quick bite to eat. But you know, Mariah, your your head's been in the clouds too long. TGI Fridays is not a diner. It's where we mere more, mortals uh, eat now and again. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean, Mariah? Just take it down just a little bit, <laughs> Mimi. 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 <laughs> Mimi. <laughs> Mimi. Dear darling, dear heart. Who would take Mariah Carey trying to be her boyfriend and you're taking her to TGI Fridays? What was this, OJ? An ordinary Joe? I mean, if, if it was, then fine. Then you call that cute and you're not trying to break an OJ's bank. But Mariah says this is a guy who has a lot of money. But then again, maybe he was just trying to see how real and down to earth you are, Mariah. You know what I mean? He knows that you already know that he's a man of means and that you can take him, you know, to the finest restaurants or that he can take you to the finest restaurants. You already know that. But what he was trying to get at is the other side of Mariah. And he was using a strategy of taking you to an OJ type of first date place. And although you say he failed the test, you failed the test too. And that's why you are now with a man who has diner type behavior when he's with women like you. I'm talking about Flavio Mariah, the one who left Heidi Klum while she was pregnant Insisted it wasn't his baby. DNA proved it was his baby. The same one who's backhanded Naomi Campbell across his yacht. And this is the kind of man I'd rather go out with an OJ who's going to take me to a, a TGI Friday than be trapped out at sea with some crazy man named Flavio. That's all I'm saying, Mariah. Take it down a thousand, Mariah. Even Kamora Lee Simmons loves Red Lobster. She's got more money than you. That's all. And I love Mariah Carey. But I just got to call it like I see it. By the way, on Tuesday, Mariah Carey's new CD, The Emancipation of Mimi, is coming out. And we'll be celebrating one of the two greatest voices of our time on Tuesday, because the other one's Whitney Houston, by playing nothing but Mariah music, except for Vision of Love. And we'll be having outtakes from Mariah Carey interviews here on the show. Not full interview, but just outtakes from, you know, some of the stellar one-liners that Mimi uh, tends to deliver when she's talking. So it's a whole day of Mariah, and she's going to be performing for Good Morning America. It's going to be a lot of fun. That day is going to be on Tuesday. Hey, Mimi. Snoop Dogg, everybody, um, admits that he gets a bit nervous, often paralyzed with nervousness before he goes on stage, even today. And here's his quote. No matter where I go, I always get a little nervous because I don't know what to expect. It's a lot of people screaming and their expectations are high. They paid their money just to see Snoop Dogg do whatever it is that I do and I don't ever want to let him down. So in the beginning, I'm always a little nervous. But once I walk on stage, I'm just ready to get it cracking. Yeah, I hear that. Nothing wrong with that dog. Guess who's got a new column? 
which is going to make it's going to um, blacklist her from a lot going on in Hollywood because now everybody's going to know that she's that. She, is there something funny that I'm not getting? Oh, um, little laughter behind the scenes. Um, so she's got this new column in the new National Enquirer, and she's laying across the top of the paper. I have it in here. I can show it to the room while I'm. She's laying across the top of the page, and it's a whole page. It's called Anna Nicole, and she welcomes us by saying, Welcome to my world. Hi, everybody. It's Anna Nicole. I know. Exactly. National Enquirer, I got to tell you something. All right, well, let me just read some of the stuff she's gossiping about, but let me just read you the introduction. Welcome to my weekly column for the all-new National Enquirer. A couple of months ago, my lawyer was called by the newspaper editor who wanted to talk to me about writing some um, some stuff. Was he kidding? The National Enquirer? Don't they always write bad stuff about me? I said no, but like I always, excuse me, like always, my lawyer wouldn't shut up. He said he wanted me to do it, yada, 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 so on and so forth. So watch this space, love and kisses Anna. So now on the space, let me see. Here's a little blind item from Anna. It says, shh, I can't say who. Well, not yet. But I heard a certain Hollywood actress is sneaking off behind her boyfriend's back to play with her producer in his private suite at the Beverly Hills Hotel. You better watch out, guys. I saw you in the elevator together. And if I spot you, the bellboy may have seen you also. Now she talks about Demi and Ashton. And this little segment is titled, Age Doesn't Matter, Look look at Ashton and Demi. Wow, go Demi, go Ashton, go age half difference. Demi is expecting again. I'm glad someone's getting some attention. Demi is really a great mom. And her boyfriend, Ashton Kushner, will be a great dad. He's funny. He's young. But to be honest with you, I'm a little jealous. I want kids again. Four more. How old are you, Demi? Tell me I still have a chance. Well, Demi's old enough to know better than to smoke while she's pregnant. And she was caught cupping a Marlboro. Cupping it like she's smoking it like, like a man. Or like you're walking down the street smoking a blunt and you don't want the cops to see you. And Ashton was with her, and she's smoking. And it's a, a recent picture, and they got the picture. They they got her. They swooped down on her. Much like they swooped down on Catherine Zeta-Jones. And, and Catherine Zeta-Jones was full belly pregnant and caught on the balcony, like somewhere over in, in, in Europe. The paparazzi were lamping in the bushes and took a picture of her smoking <laughs> on, on the balcony. And and um, it, it was a picture that it was sent all around the world. All the picture, all the newspapers ran it. Anyway, here's what she says about Pat O'Brien. Then we'll move on. I mean, she talks about a bunch of other stuff. I don't really care what Anna Nicole Smith has to say in terms of gossip, only because she's still trying to fit into the Hollywood mold. So she's not really going to be saying anything except for sticky sweet stuff, like she said about Demi and Ashton. That's not why I opened the Inquirer. You know what I mean? I like to see the backbiting and stuff. I, I, it sounds terrible to say. I feel bad about saying it, but honest to goodness, that's what that's what I like. That's why. That's when you guys think this show is at its best. It's sad. It's a sad world. What makes us happy? So here's what um, here's what she says about Pat O'Brien. Now, with all we know about Pat O'Brien. This is what Anna says. Pat O'Brien, I feel for you. Everyone knows you as the guy who hosts The Insider on TV, but I know you as a friend. And although I know what you're going through, rehab sucks. There's no special treatment, so be strong. I'm rooting for you. I wish you the best of luck. I'll be your first interview when you're back on TV where you belong. See, shut up, Anna. Go sit down someplace. Go take another pill. As a matter of fact, are these, is this column even written by her? Is she functional? Is she able to write? Is she able to really observe other people's behavior when her behavior is so wacky? Shut up, Anna. National Enquirer, really. Really. Give me a break. Tori Spelling's father swooped down on her. Remember I was telling you that story about... 
Tori Spelling holding hands with um, the actor uh, Charlie. I don't know where he's from. I couldn't even tell you. What's that? What is that? Trev Hollywood. Yeah, what, what was that? That's not me. I know. Nobody in here moved. I can't do nothing about it. Do you smell smoke? <laughs> Why are you acting surprised? <laughs> nothing works. I, I, know, I know. I'm trying to play it off like I'm surprised, but really, you know. <laughs> Everything here, it is what it is. <laughs> Let's just ignore the sounds. Just keep it moving. Just another day in the life of work. Here at the experience. That's all right. Keep talking. We're about to have a brand new studio. It's going to be ready in three or four months. It's going to be fly. And I'm going to have a little sitting lounge area to interview my guests. Like, you know, when, I'm, when the VH1 cameras are here, nobody cares. I think people like the show with the broken stuff. It, it's funny. It, it's funny. If I was listening, you know, and heard the phone hang up like at grandma's house and, you know... <laughs> I mean, it really does make it unique from everything else going on out there. <laughs> you know, everybody else with, with good stuff, and we're over here with... <laughs> well, Paul Sanchez is about to change all of that. Yeah, Paul Sanchez is here. He's our chief engineer. We poached him from KISS. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, um, Miss Jason Williams, but I got to use one of your T-shirts to wipe up this mess that I just made. Paul Sanchez, welcome to WBLS. <laughs> Most importantly, welcome to the experience. <laughs> Please help us get this thing together. Mm. Do I have boogies hanging out of my nose? Oh. He caught me in mid-swig and I laughed and it went everywhere. Mm. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Let me sit down. Listen to the sit-down chairs. Just everything. <laughs> Just a mess. Oh, God. I love it. Don't you say nothing about my station. We got it going on. Right, so Tori Spelling is... Is walking down the street, you know, with this guy, this this actor Char Charlie. Tori Spelling just got married about five months ago, and presently, in reruns on E, she's she's hosting the wedding special of not just her wedding but the other Hollywood weddings. In the meantime, she's tipping on her husband, and it's clear, and people have been talking about it. Aaron, her father, got wind of, of the tipation, called her to a family meeting at that compound that they have, and told her, here we go, what the hell could you be thinking? Aaron barked at a teary Tory. The ink is barely dry on your marriage license and you're painting the town with this actor? Wow. Wow. Well, they say Tory left the house in wow. tears. Promising her father that she would end the relationship with Aaron, I mean with this man Charlie, and start acting like a wife to her husband, Ryan. So that's that. <laughs> We're going to take a break. I got a big announcement to make about WBLS. Oh boy, I'm going to take, um, how about if I take some phone calls through this break? I would love to do that. 866-GET-WENDY. The phone lines are open, and we'll be back to round out the bonus hour next, right here on the station with today's R&B and Classic Soul and the Wendy Williams Experience. It's 107.5 <laughs> WBLS. Hi, everybody. It's the Bismarcky. 
but, but you're checking out the bonus hour of Wicked Wicked Wendy, Wicked Wicked Williams. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Wendy. I just called to say that you are absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I, I just, I just can't get enough of you. I, me and my girlfriend, we just driving home. We leaving the gym in Wayne, New Jersey. Oh. And we're just like, we gotta listen to the gangster hour. I can't talk to you. I can't talk to you right now. Oh. But that- you need to call it the comedy hour because <laughs> you are hilarious and the sound effects with the music and <laughs> it's, it's just so funny. Like I'm like. Crying in my car about to have an accident because you are just so funny. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. You're welcome. All right, take Bye. care. Bye bye. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hey, Wendy, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Yeah, this is uh, Congo from the Bronx. Hi, Congo. Hey, uh, Wendy, uh, I-, I have a question for you. You know um, about your your man Hardy. Okay. Um, now, what happened to that doctor he was dating? Um, uh, you know, Art's the type of person, if I had to guess, um, he's probably still friends with her. Yeah, but I thought it was such a great relationship. Uh, Uh, I don't really get all in his private life like that. I I prefer, in my mind, for Art to be um, single and, and sleeping with the whole New York City. Just because it makes for more interesting talk on Monday mornings around the water cooler in the pink office. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You know, is it because of all the gay talk that maybe she got turned off to the party? No, actually, it's not that at all. She doesn't listen to the show. She's so busy. She's got a private practice. Yeah, she's in her own private practice. Oh, that's that's great. But you know, but why aren't they like you know tight? I don't know, and I'll be honest with you. We all, I mean, we here at the show, we choose to share what we choose to share about our personal lives. Uh-huh. And, um, but, but there's a lot that we all hold back because there's a part of us that we still want our personal lives to be personal. Like, I've met the doctor once at a party, uh-huh. but I, I already know art, and I also know how I am. I wasn't all up in her face, hey girl, let's have a drink. I, I finger waved at her, and that was that. And as close as me and art are, I, I met her, and I don't want to know any more about her. You, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. With like, like everybody respects their own privacy. Okay. Well, oh. you know, um, sorry, sorry for what happened with Dave, and uh, please keep on keeping on, Wendy. Oh, well, you know, and we will. Okay. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wendy, have you ever noticed that you are an, one ugly dragon queen looking woman, and your husband looks like big ass lurch? God help your son. I hope he did not take after your genes. You should never call anyone ugly, honey. They do not come much more dreadful than you. I met you years ago at a party. And when you left, we dogged your corny, tired ass. I know this will not make the air, nor is this anything that you don't already know. You better be saving your money, honey, because your time on the air is up in a minute. Sign truth. Well, truth, if you were really the truth, then you'd be signing your name. And don't worry about what I save in terms of my money. And in case you didn't notice, my looks have nothing to do with sitting on this microphone. Put that where? Back there. But I thank you for listening. So Paul is on the phone and um, Paul's got an announcement. So hit it. Hi, Wendy. This is Paul Mooney. You're talking about that special announcement. Here I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Listen, we're going to be giving away $100,000. I got to go out and beg for spare quarters and get some food stamps to try to have me some coffee and a sandwich. (laughs) Wendy, you told me when I came here what was up, but I didn't believe you. But anyway, we're giving away $1,000 starting next Thursday from 7.20 a.m., 12.20, 5.20 p.m. We're giving that money away. It's a hundred thousand dollars cash guarantee. You have to wait for me to tell you when to call, and I'm going to show you my powers. I feel like I'm going to bewitch. I'm going to give the tenth caller one thousand dollars. So call now two one two five four five one zero seven five. You heard me. Call now two one two five four five one zero seven five. I'm going to save my powers to next Thursday morning when it all begins. But I'm going to show you the day just a little bit. But I'm going to save my real powers Thursday morning of next week. 
Yeah, when you don't, baby. try to call. We know your voice. Yeah. 107.5 <laughs> WBLS. So call now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Paul has released a 1000 of the $100,000 to the 10th caller right now. So it's no joke. So call now. And it, all you got to do is call in. The 10th caller wins $1,000. And... Here on the show, though, it's 866-GET-WENDY. But call now. And when you hear Paul say call starting next Thursday, then you'll be calling um, a few times a day. He said the, he said the hours. I forgot what he said. Uh, but he said the hours. Isn't that great? We have $100,000 just to, you know, do what we want with here at the radio station. So we decided to give it back to you good people because you're the ones who keep us on the air. Isn't that great? So this contest really starts next Thursday, but we're getting, you know, we're giving you a little preview by, you know, breaking off $1,000 right now. How come I'm saying the 10th caller, but nobody's getting the phone? Shakira. Caller number one, caller number two, like that. Let's see if we can get that winner. And then you just pass that sheet. And then, um, thanks. So I can announce the winner. So, um, listen to her. Oh, she's busy. Did you hear about the woman killed in a Madison Avenue hit and run? What is that static? Are you all really hearing that on the radio? I'm hearing it in my headphones. Does that come through on the radio, uh, Hollywood? Yeah, it must be. Because we hear what's coming off the air. We hear the air sound? Yeah. Hey, Nicole, when you're sitting in there in your office, do you hear, um, do you, in the pink room, do you hear static when, when, on there? Uh, oh, wow. And she says a little only because she's so used to it. <laughs> Aw. <Aww. laughs> she's trying to play it off. <laughs> the woman was found unconscious in the middle of Madison Avenue and pronounced dead. They say she was probably a victim of a hit and run. This happened on Friday. As in earlier today. No, it was, I'm sorry, last week. All right, we're hearing about the story a week later. Police officers responded to a 911 call and found a 46-year-old woman at about 10.30 in the evening on Madison Avenue near East 65th Street. She was taken to New York Presbyterian Hospital and pronounced dead. The medical ex examiners um, hadn't determined the cause of death, but police said the woman appeared to have been struck by a car. Her name is not immediately released. And she lived about eight blocks from the scene of the accident. She probably went out to get a pint of haagen ice cream before the 11 o'clock news. Isn't that something? And it's like there was nobody around to see anything. People just roll over people, Paula Abdul, and continue riding. Unless you catch them on camera phone or, you know, one of those lights at the intersection. If you hit somebody in your car and nobody was around to see it, would you keep going? I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nobody say anything. But there's five people in the room. <laughs> if nobody sees it and you hit somebody, 10, 15 at night, you probably just came from a few drinks after work. You're on your way to hit the, you know, the Midtown Tunnel to go home to your family over in Long Island. Would you keep going? Put your hand up if it's yes. Two people in the room said yes and three said no. And ironically, the person who you think would say yes has said no. <laughs> wow. That's Miss Gladys' son. I don't, I don't believe him. She raised, she raised a good one. I don't believe him, don't believe him either. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely don't believe. <laughs> Let's redo that. If you hit somebody in your car, okay, it's after midnight, so it's clearly not a child out in the street, and and you're trying to get to the tunnel as fast as possible to get home, and you hit somebody, and nobody's around. Raise your hand if you keep going. Oh, see? All of a sudden, three people would keep going and only two people would stay. Now, when you say that you would stay for you two people left, is it that you would...
put a note around the person saying, you know, <laughs> identifying that they were hit by a car and it wasn't like a heart attack or something. You, you understand? Or would you or would you stay and call 911 and stay, stay, stay? Because, see, there's a difference between not running and, you know, leaving a little note to clear your conscience and go. Franny, you, you would stay for the whole 911. Hollywood, you would stay for the whole 911. Yes. Because of what happened to my sister. I know. Oh, God, please, 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 please. Well, I mean, you, you talking real? Please. We talking real, right? What happened to your sister again? I tried to block it well, out. She when got you... hit by a drunk driver. Oh, I... I'm sorry for bringing yeah, no this up. No, it's fine. But it's but the woman from Madison mean. Avenue. And you know, I Nobody hears you. You're talking to me. The mic. Recently, I just found out who it is. What? I don't know where he is. They think he left the country, but I got all his information and everything. And so, I just found this out. Remember when we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, her stepsister was listening that day, and she had found the information. That I don't know where she got it from whatever, but she emailed it to me. That happened in 88. I just got it recently. Wow. And your sister was killed back in 88. Right. With a drunk driver. Right. And he tried to keep going. No, he did keep he, going. He did keep going. He actually killed her, two other people in the car, mm. and some other people that same night. Wow. So, somehow he got, you know, they released him from the hospital, mm. and nobody ever heard from him again for years. Right. Now, my father was a detective at the time, and, you know, went searching for him. Nobody could find him or whatever. Mm. Um... And I don't know where she got this information from, but they, they know who it is. So what are you thinking about, rolling up to his house? Well, that was his last known address, are you, what I have. Are you, are you thinking about looking for this guy? You want to shout him out on the radio? Because his neighbors could take care of him. <clears throat> I think at his least, name was Manuel least, Silva. At least by embarrassing him. Dominican dude. And wh where, was his, where was his address? Like in Yonkers, in Bronx, Not, um, Brooklyn? I think, one, I think it was in New Jersey somewhere. Manuel Silvers. No, Manuel I, I want to get it right. I think it's Manuel Silva. Manuel G. Silva. Well, why don't you bring in the, the yeah, police file on yeah. Monday, and then we'll put him on blast. Yeah, because for years, we never, you know, my family never knew who it was. Yeah. Wow. Dear Wendy, don't listen to that uh, truth idiot. Oh, you look like an adult film actress to me. I'm a female, and if I had the chance... Uh-uh. How you do? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, we got the winner for the $1,000. Where did the sheet go? Oh, here's another person. She can put that where? Up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are re there's a remix to that. <laughs> Earlier, I remixed it. I said something about it. You can put that where? Over there. <laughs> After midnight tonight, it's you can put that where? In there. In here. Where's Shakira? Well, let's get the winner. It's almost time to go home. Vaughn's coming up. Dear Wendy, I just, I'm 21 years old, and I just secretly bought a beautiful house in Atlanta on my own. <laughs> my problem is that I currently live with my mother, and it's just she and I paying the bills. My brother is 17 and has never had a job and never really does anything. My mother is a single, beautiful 45-year-old woman. And I'm afraid to leave her. And she tells me over and over again that she wouldn't know what to do without me. How do I just up and leave? Easy. If your mother's single, 45, and beautiful, she'll be fine. And for you to be 21, purchasing a beautiful house in Atlanta on your own, you are to be applauded. Your mother will handle herself. She's had 45 years of practice. I'm glad you're leaving. I'm glad you're leaving. Your mother's doing psychological games to you. And you're no good brother. Maybe he'll grow up. Put that where? Back there. Yeah, don't feel bad. She says, she'll be alone. I feel bad. <sighs> Please. Don't feel bad. Go live your life. She's lived hers, and she's still living hers at 45. Laura Kionez, everybody, of Staten Island, New York. She lives on Stern Court. Laura just won $1,000 in cash. That is her share in the WBLS $1,000 cash guarantee, which starts next Thursday. Yay, Laura. Everybody else, keep it here, because we've got 900 
and ninety nine thousand. Wait, how much money do we have left? Nine ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. How much? <laughs> ninety nine thousand nine hundred and nine and ninety nine dollars left. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, we got the yup because Laura just took. <laughs> Look. One plus one is five. I don't know. All I know is that we got some money left, and you can get your share of it, okay? But the winning begins again on Thursday morning. You listen for Paul. Paul is going to be doing the solicits. Ow. <laughs> Come on. Paul's going to be doing the solicits. Listen, we always got something good. Spring is here. Everybody can use a few extra <laughs> dollars. <laughs> Dumbass. Look, you all, it's time for me to go home. By the way, Lonnie Youngblood was in the group War. Remember, we gave away passes yesterday, and I was like, who was Yanni, Lonnie Youngblood? Somebody um, facts back. But we got to go home. Don't forget, tonight, the place to be is Lounge 42 in Mount Vernon, New York. I'll be there hosting the WBLS live broadcast, which starts at 1 a.m. I should be at the club sometime just before 1. The doors open for the club, though, at 11 o'clock. Not the usual 9 o'clock. Like, you know, a lot of people, the doors open up at 9 o'clock. <clears throat> people start floating in at 10. This place is truly grown and sexy. So take yourself a little sexy disco nap. I know you've had a hard day at work. You know, then you wake up. You put on, men put on hard bottom shoes. You can wear jeans with them. But put on hard bottom shoes. And um, ladies, we always know what to do. It's a 23 and over for the ladies and 25 and over for the men. They are very strict with the ID at the door. And they're very strict with the dress code. Parking is right next door. So if you're wearing the ow, my feet hurt shoes, let me just let you know. The parking is right next door and this lounge is actually um, attached to like a dining room where there's dinner except there's no dinner that time of night so there are plenty of places to sit when your disco feet start hurting you and you don't have far to walk because the parking is right next door. That's for the girls like me, you know, who are going to be wearing the big shoes. And you always like to do a, a check. Because for me, I go as far as, can you please call the club and find out how many steps that I have to go down or up or whatever? Because that dictates what shoe, what shoe I wear. Now, I stick with the four inches, but it dictates how, how much the strap is cutting my foot or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? I even like to know how many steps up into the DJ booth. And they think that I'm crazy for calling, but really, these things are helpful for a woman to know. Have you ever gone to the club with the wrong shoe and realized that, oh my God, it's 16 steps down onto the dance floor and there's a big spotlight on the steps where people see you come down like Grace Kelly. And here I am with the effed up shoes. Yes, they look beautiful, but my feet are killing me and I can't navigate steps in this pair of shoes. I'll tell you what, over at the Laugh Factory, we have Wednesday's comedy. For those of you who go there, you've probably never noticed this, but you'll notice from now on because I'm bringing attention to it. They used to not have a railing. It's only three simple steps for me to get up the steps to go onto the stage. But there was no railing there. Great, I'm not thinking about it where I'm wearing Uggs or, you know, something flat, of which I don't really wear flats. But terrible when I need my balance to walk up to the stage. Three simple steps. I just need a little something to hold on to. I asked them, please install a little banister. Otherwise, you know, I can't go up on stage anymore. Really, I just, I, you know. So the banister's there. So... Just to let you know, a foot check, ladies, lots of seats, <laughs> parking right next door. I'll see you at Lounge 42 tonight in Mount Vernon. For the rest of you, I love you for listening today. The best of show on Monday is going to be hot, hot, hot. We got best ofs, a lot of good people. Hollywood, who are we putting down for the best of, some of them? Um, Vanessa Williams. Oh, that's enough. That's enough. You see what I'm saying? Clifton Davis. Oh, I know you might say yawn, yawn, big board. No, the Clifton Davis interview was actually very, very entertaining. And um, give us one more. Just one more. Bushwick Bill. Oh my God! I know it sounds boring. I know it sounds corny, but, but he—he was, he was, he was so good. So it's the best of the Wendy experience. Just you know what? This Monday's going to be a beautiful day. I'm taking it off to enjoy the weather, uh, um, and I'll talk to you live again on Tuesday. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And um, for those of you listening online in LA, I'll see you at Forbidden City on Vine Street on Sunday night for the party. Bye, everybody. The Wendy Williams broadcast day has completed. Oh man! And WBLS music starts next.